Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be finishing up our review of the Control V2 and Shogun mouse pads. Now, as I said when I did my unboxing video, this is my first time using any of Infinity Mice's pads, and I definitely have some lofty expectations for these pads based on the praise I had heard from the previous Infinity Mice pads. And I'm happy to say, for the most part, both the Control V2 and the Shogun did deliver to these lofty expectations. Both of them performed exceptionally well. There were a couple odd caveats to their performance, but I'll talk about those more later in this video. Now, before we get into it, I did want to say a Big thank you again to Infinity Mice for sending out the Control V2 and the Shogun for review. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much to them. As always, regardless of a free or discounted unit, reviews in this channel will always be unbiased. I will always tell you the truth about everything you see here on the channel. As always, this video will be fully subtitled and I will have timestamps available down in the description if you're looking for a particular topic. All right, let's start off by talking about the surface attributes on the Control V2 and the Shogun. Alrighty, now according to Infinity Mice, the surfacing on the Control V2 and the Shogun is a non coated control surfacing with below surface stitching. The surface is very very, very smooth in hand and feels fairly even on both the X and Y axis. Now, breaking out my electronic microscope, you can see that the surface stitching on both the Control V2 and the Shogun is this very thick zigzag stitching that points slightly leftwise on the X axis. Now, the stitching is kind of a hybridization between the stitching we saw on the Vaxi PA and the GSR2, in my opinion, where the Control V2 and the Shogun have the soft surfacing you find on the Vaxi PA while still having that same zigzag stitching that we found on the GSR2. But Infinity Mice has actually done something very clever here where they've made the surface stitching very soft, again similar to the Vaxi PA, but they've also widened the zigzagness of the stitching which completely negates the slight variance on the XY axis performance we saw on the GSR2. Now this is very clever from Infinity Mice here because if the stitching wasn't as soft or was it maybe a little thinner, these pads would suffer the same inconsistency issues that were found in the GSR2. So props to Infinity Mice, they've done a really good job here of having the same consistency in the surface stitching while negating the potential problems found on other pads. Alrighty, now next up I want to talk about build quality and QC. Now I did have very lofty expectations for this area because I heard a lot of really good things about the QC, uh, specifically on the V2 pads. I heard the build quality was fantastic across the board. And from what I've seen so far, that is true. The build quality in QC on both my Control V2 and Shogun is essentially perfect. I haven't found a single frayed stitch. I haven't found any inconsistencies in the edge stitching, surface stitching. It is just an incredibly well-built pad. I'm kind of shocked at how well QC it is because again, this is only their second run on a mouse pad, but this thing is essentially perfect. Massive props to Infinity Mice here. They've done a really good job in terms of the pad QC. Now, another similarity that the Control V2 and the Shogun share with the GSR2 is the overall softness of the pads. Now, previously the GSR2 was the softest pad I've ever used, but the Infinity Mice pads make the GSR2 feel like a sheet of glass with how soft they are. Now, given the control focus design of these pads, the softness makes sense, but these pads are very soft. And unlike the GSR2 that had that thick middle layer that pushed against surface pressure, the Control V2 and the Shogun don't have the same degree of reverse pressure. So the pads can feel kind of muddy depending on how far you push your mouse in to the pad. It did take me about a week or so to get used to the softness, but once I got used to the softness, it really does help the performance of these pads because much like the GSR2, both the Control V2 and the Shogun have a high degree of control variability, just a much wider scale that we saw in the GSR2 due to the added softness on these pads. Now, if you're not familiar with control variability when it comes to mouse pads, basically what it means is you can change the amount of friction drag control you feel on your mouse against the mouse pad, depending on how hard you press your mouse into the pad surface. Now, just like I did when I reviewed the Zowie GSR2, I'll give you a generalization of how each grip type feels on the Control V2 and the Shogun. Now, just keep in mind that this is a generalization and depending on your setup, your control variability will be less or more pronounced depending on what kind of skates you're using. All right, let's start off with palm grip. Now, palm grip was the most controlled feeling style on both the Control V2 and the Shogun. Since there's so much weight pushing the mouse into the pad, the friction between the pad and the skate surfacing is very high. The static friction is very high as you have to physically push the mouse through the surface of the mouse pad, which makes it feel very muddy. Dynamic friction is stable and consistent across all axes and stopping power is very strong due to the muddiness of this pad. This was definitely the slowest and most controlled grip style across the board. Maybe a little too slow and a little too controlled because again, you do kind of have to fight the pad for your movements a little bit because of how hard you're pressing into the pad. But again, that'll depend on your setup and your hand weight, your kind of mouse using and what kind of skates you're using. Now, claw grip felt similar to palm grip, but since there isn't as much weight forcing the mouse into the pad surface, the muddiness that you found on palm grip was significantly less impactful on claw grip. As such, static friction was much lighter and easier to initiate movements across the pad because you don't have to fight the pad anymore. Dynamic friction was still consistent across all axes, but movements were obviously a lot faster. Stopping power was still, of course, strong, but not as strong as it was with the palm grip because you're not pushing as far into the pad. Now, fingertip grip was the oddest grip style that I found on the Control V2 and the Shogun because I do have a very heavy fingertip grip. I'm not a very light fingertip gripper. So for me, fingertip grip felt pretty much identical to claw because I kind of pushed the mouse into the pad with my fingers. For people who have very light claw grips, it's going to be very different 
different where you're going to have a lot less static friction, less stopping power. The dynamic friction is still going to be consistent across all axes, but obviously it's going to feel a lot faster because you're not pushing into the pad as much on a lighter grip. Again, for me with my heavier grip style, I was pushing in a lot more, so it felt closer to claw grip. But if you are a lighter gripper, it's going to be a little different. It'll be the fastest out of everything. Now, before we go on, I did want to make a quick note about this dynamic control. Just like we saw in the GSR2, you can add in or lessen the control you feel on this mouse pad with specific grip styles. Specifically with fingertip grip and claw grip have a lot of variability of what you can do because you can kind of adjust how much you're pressing into the pad. With a very light grip, you can kind of make both these pads feel like a more of a hybrid pad, but then with a heavier grip, you can make it feel like a control pad. Now you can't really do this on palm grip because palm grip, obviously you can't really adjust that too much. So you don't have that variability from your fingers, but with fingertip grip and claw grip, you do have a lot of variability of how you can use this pad. So keep that in mind, depending on your grip style and how heavy you push in, this pad is going to feel either more like a hybrid pad or it's going to feel like a straight control pad. It just really depends on how hard you're pushing into the pad surface. All right, next up, let's talk about ski compatibility because this is a very important thing when it comes to very soft mouse pad like the Shogun or the Control V2. Now, normal larger surface area skates like stocks worked perfectly fine for the most part. I had no issues from my testing. However, I can't say the same thing when it comes to low surface area skates like dot skates. Dot skates aren't tall enough to compensate for the depth of the pad. So if you have a very heavy grip like a palm grip or a claw grip, you can run into issues where the bottom of your mouse will scratch against the mouse pad surface because the dots can't compensate for the height of the pad. Now you can counteract this by lightening your grip, which is what I end up doing with my X2H with my six obsidians installed on it. Or alternatively, you could add more dots to increase the surface area, but that also kind of ruins the point of dot skates. The best solution I found was use larger surface area circular skates like the X-Ray Pad Jade and Obsidian Donut skates. I use those on my Death Adder V3 and my OGM Cloud, and those were perfect because they did allow me to sink into the pad a little bit, just enough to get a little more control from the surface, but without sinking so far in where the bottom of my mouse was rubbing against the surface. So just keep in mind, if you are someone who commonly uses dot skates and you don't use that many and you like the speedier dot skate experience, if you have a very heavy grip, you may run into problems on the Control V2 and the Shogun. Alrighty, let's talk in game performance. Now, since both of these pads are control pads, it'll be no surprise that both the Shogun and the Control V2 are excellent pads for X-axis heavy games like tack shooters, and as such static and flicking performance on both the pads is very solid, the extra stopping power from the softness really helps with static consistency and flicking consistency here. Now, both the pads are still very good pads for tracking and more target switching focus games like Overwatch 2 and Quake, but due to the control nature of these pads, it does make dynamic aiming a little slower than I personally prefer, but given that this is a control focus mouse pad, that is to be expected. Now, I did want to make a small note here about the Shogun. For whatever reason, I found that the Shogun is actually a little faster than the Control V2. From what I've seen from Infinity Mice's website and from other reviewers, the Control V2 and the Shogun have the same surface specs. The only difference is the surface design, but for whatever reason, my Shogun ever feels ever so slightly faster than the Control V2. So personally speaking, I did prefer the Shogun just because it felt a little more in the range of a hybrid pad, which is my preferred pad type. The Control V2 was still a great pad, but I just like the extra little bit of speed on the Shogun. Now, again, I'm not sure if that's just a weird thing with my Shogun or if that's how the Shogun was across the board. A lot of other people said that they feel a one for one. So this may just be isolated to me or the skates I'm using, but just wanted to note that if you get the Shogun, it may be a little faster than you expect. But again, it's not going to be a significant margin like going from the GSR2 to the Control V2. It's not going to be that much. It'd be a very, very, very slight margin. But I will say overall, I'm very impressed with the range of performance on both the Control V2 and the Shogun. I would really love to see how Infinity Mice's hybrid pad feels because of those of you who've been watching my channel for a long time, I love hybrid pads. And having a pad of this quality like we see here on the Control V2 and the Shogun, but with a more balanced speed control surface would be a very solid pad in my opinion. And definitely some would be up my alley. The Control V2 and the Shogun are still exceptionally solid pads for control focus users, but I definitely think I would prefer the hybrid pad a little more, but I'll have to cover that in a future video. All right. Now let's up, let's talk about humidity resistance. Now, this is one of the biggest factors that can affect the performance of a mouse pad. Now the Control V2 and the Shogun are very resistant to moisture, but not resistant like the GSR2 is resistant because it absorbs the moisture into its second layer. The Infinity Mice pads are actually kind of hydrophobic in a way, where as you can see here, if water is applied to the surface, water just kind of beads up on the surface. It doesn't drain into the pad itself. The only way moisture is going to drain into the pad is through the slight gaps in the stitching. Now what this means is that 
that if you have an arm that's very sweaty or playing in a very humid environment, very, very tiny droplets of water are just going to sit on the top of this pad and they're not gonna go away until they're pushed into the gaps in the stitching. Now, another note here is that these tiny little gaps in the stitching do fill up extremely quickly. So that's another problem as well because you're just gonna be pushing water around this pad until you can find a place for it to go into. This does have some pretty big impacts in terms of performance because it's going to affect the overall consistency of this mouse pad. However, there is a bigger impact of the surface being very hydrophobic. If your arm is very sweaty, what happens is that if there's any moisture applied to it, it kind of makes the pad feel sticky to bare skin, which makes it very difficult to actually move your arm up and down and across the pad. The best way I can describe how it feels is like if you're dragging an eraser over a table and you know how it kind of like does those skipping motions where it's too much friction and it jumps and then it keeps going and it jumps. It's pretty much like that. Then that was one of the biggest issues I ran into on these pads. So an arm sleeve or a hand sleeve is highly, highly recommended for both the Control V2 and the Shogun if you're in high humidity environments or you have sweaty hands and sweaty arms. Now, one positive effect of the moisture resistant surface and the tightness of the surface stitching on the Control V2 and the Shogun is that both of them are quite resistant to dust, crumbs, and cat hair. Now, small pieces of dust and crumbs can sometimes get stuck around the edge of the pad between the edge stitching and the surface stitching, but nothing that's caused a problem so far. Now, obviously, if there's anything on the surface, you can just wipe it away gently with a microfiber cloth. But the best thing, in my opinion, is that both of these Control V2 and the Shogun are almost completely resistant to cat hair. Again, I have three cats in my office is constantly bombarded with cat hair, and I haven't had a single issue where I had cat hair get stuck in the stitching or affect the actual consistency of the pad at all, which is something I did run into on the GSR2 due to its larger surface stitching with the more gaps in it. This was much more consistent. So that is one positive. So while it isn't that as good as the GSR2 in terms of moisture resistance, it's a lot better than it was in terms of dust resistance and cat hair resistance, which is a really cool thing to see. Honestly, I'd rather have a pad be more resistant to cat hair and dust than moisture, because again, I wear an arm sleeve anyways. I do think this is a bit of a win here for Infinity Mice, because again, cat hair and mouse pads is a nightmare to deal with, and having this pad be completely resistant to it is really nice to see. All right, now one other area where Infinity Mice has done a fantastic job is with the bases here on the Control V2 and the Shogun. Now, this is a custom IPU base. Now, I believe this is a rubber base. I don't think it's poron, because when it gets exposed to moisture, it gets a little slippery, which is a good thing, because poron bases are honestly, in my opinion, very overrated, and I'd much rather have a very good sticky rubber base like we have here. But I will say the base does perform exceptionally well. It doesn't pass the one finger test, of course, as we normally see with rubber bases, but once force is applied to the surface, the base anchors itself very well into the pad, which is really good. Overall, I haven't had a single issue with this mouse pad slipping during use, even with very light fingertip usage, it has stayed very consistent. My arm swiping across the bottom of the pad hasn't caused it to move at all, which is a great thing to see. Overall, the bases just have performed exceptionally well. I have no complaints. One other really cool benefit of the bases I forgot to mention is that no matter how much water is absorbed or added to the surface of the Control V2 with the Shogun, it's not going to leak through this rubber base either, which is really nice to see as well. Now, one other area where Infinity Mice has done a fantastic job on both the Control V2 is the stitched edge. Now, as I mentioned before, the edge stitching is incredibly well QC. There's not a single frayed edge on there. The edge stitching is pretty much level with the surface of the pad, so there won't be any additional drag from moving your arm up and down on the edge of the pad, which is fantastic to see. I've had no problems with the edges causing any incompatibility with any kind of skates or arm sleeves. It's just very well done. So again, really good job to Infinity Mice here. The edge stitching is pretty much perfect. All right, now I want to briefly talk about arm sleeve usage. As I kind of alluded to before, due to the hydrophobic nature of the surface of the Control V2 and the Shogun, it's highly recommend you wear an arm sleeve just so you don't have any stickiness between the pad surface and your arm, specifically if you're in a high moisture environment or have very sweaty arms or hands. Now I tested my Pulsar ES sleeve, my Focus Pro sleeve, SkyPad sleeve, and just a standard athletic sleeve, and they all worked exceptionally well on both the Control V2 and the Shogun. Just because the surfaces of both the Control V2 and the Shogun are very smooth and they're very tightly stitched, there wasn't a lot of friction from the arm sleeves. In addition to that, because the stitched edge is also so well done, there's not a lot of added friction there as well. So again, arm sleeve usage is highly recommended on both of these pads if you are in a high moisture environment or have sweaty arms and hands. I'm actually kind of surprised that Infinity Mice doesn't sell their own version of an arm sleeve because arm sleeves work really, really well with their pads. That would be something I would definitely like to see them maybe work on in the future, maybe release an arm sleeve to go along with their pads. It'd be something really cool to see. Just Specifically with their really cool designs, like if we had an arm sleeve with like the Shogun patterning on it, it would look amazing. Alrighty, and lastly, I wanted to follow up on something I talked about during my unboxing video. That is going to be the smell of the pads. Now, both the Control V2 and the Shogun do have a slight chemical smell to them, more so on the Shogun than the Control V2, but the smell does dissipate fairly quickly. What I found the best thing to do is to kind of air it out, just kind of hang it in your bathroom or hang it outside in a clothesline and just let the wind just kind of carry the smell away. That was the most effective way I found of getting rid of it. But I did want to mention there's going to be a slight smell when you get out of the box, 
but it's nothing too serious. Just air it out for a day or two and the smell should go away. All right, let's talk final thoughts. Now, I'm going to be talking about both these pads in terms of their pricing because the Control V2 in the 490 by 420 millimeter version retails for around 48 Canadian dollars. Now, in terms of price to performance, I don't think there's a lot of pads on the market that can match this because the Control V2 for 48 Canadian dollars is a disgustingly good deal. Again, the pad does have a little bit of quirkiness in terms of moisture because of the hydrophobicness of the surface. But again, wearing an arm sleeve completely negates that entirely. And in my opinion, since I'm someone who wears arm sleeves a lot, these pads are fantastic. Both the Control V2 and Shoguns are amazing pads. Personally speaking, I do prefer the Shogun over the Control V2, mainly because I love the surface design on the Shogun. It's just gorgeous, but also because my Shogun is a little bit faster than my Control V2. So I do like the more hybrid-ish performance, but both these pads are exceptionally good pads. I'd highly recommend you check them out. I definitely would love to check out the hybrid and speed pads from Infinity Device because again, I love hybrid pads and having a hybrid pad of the same build quality like we're seeing here on the Control V2 and the Shogun would be exceptionally good in my opinion. So I'll have to check those pads out in the future. But that is going to be everything for my review of the Control V2 and the Shogun from Infinity Mice. Thank you very much again to Infinity Mice for sending these out for me to take a look at. I greatly appreciate it. I've really enjoyed using both these pads and the Shogun specifically is going to be a mainstay on my desk for quite a while because I love that mouse pad. It's a really cool one. If you guys want to check out the Control V2, the Shogun, or any of the other mouse pads from Infinity Mice, I will have their product page linked down below. It'll be non-affiliate as always, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.